Hi, I'm Stephanie Snowden, and welcome to this edition of Richland Revealed, coming up on this show. It's time to take ownership of your community. You'd ask, how do I do that? Stay tuned, I'll tell you coming up. Our Richland County Agency is being recognized for its positive impact on our community. Stick around and we'll show you who it is and how you can get involved. Find out how the taxes you pay come back to benefit you. I'll have more coming up. This and much more on this edition of Richland Revealed. We're here at the beautiful Columbia Museum of Art in downtown Columbia. The Museum of Art celebrates outstanding artistic creativity through its collections, exhibitions, and even some of its programs, and has a mission of engaging and enriching the mind and the spirit. We'll have more on the museum a little later on in an interview with the Executive Director, Karen Brosius. In early November, Richland County employees kicked off their annual United Way efforts. You're seeing it here. The group brainstormed and learned about all of the ways that the United Way benefits our community. You've probably seen this new addition to RCTV, WeatherWise, featuring Richland County Chief Meteorologist Ken O'Quinn. The WeatherWise segments are fun and engaging and meant to teach county residents about the fundamentals of weather. And speaking of the fundamentals, the Richland County PIO staff recently wrapped up the fall edition of Richland 101. Richland 101 is an eight-week series of classes aimed at teaching our citizens about the inner workings of county government. We have a full wrap-up from Richland Revealed's Melinda Edwards. Have you ever wondered how Richland County is spending your tax dollars? Well, we offer a free course called Richland 101, and it covers everything from public safety to public education. Richland 101 is a four-week course that meets every Monday and Thursday evening at various locations throughout the county. There are meetings at the Courthouse, Jim Hamilton L.B. Owens Airport, and even a tour of the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. Twelve Richland County citizens just completed our fall session this October. It's definitely an open forum and there's nothing hidden. If, there, if anybody ever had um, any apprehension or anything about taking this, I would suggest that they take it because there's nothing hidden. Everything is laid out. You're free to ask questions about any and everything um, about from who runs what department to how money is being spent to how ordinances, laws, anything that are, is being passed. If you have certain concerns about things in your community, who you need to talk to to get problems resolved and how they go about fixing them. So it was more than enlightening. So this is really a great program to get into and go through if you're looking forward to learning something about the government, not just how they spend their money, but how it works, who's running it, and how you can make changes. Richland 101 is being offered again this April. Call 576-2062 to register. For RCTV, I'm Melinda Edwards. And our educational efforts continued in the fall of 2012 as county staff hosted a record number of information sessions about the transportation penny aimed at providing residents with just the facts. County staff participated in nearly 50 educational meetings. In addition, a tremendous amount of information was made available on the Richland County website at rcgov.us. The county recently hosted a fun and informative event, the 8th Annual Neighborhood Planning Conference. Some of the topics included preparing for disasters, making your neighborhood look better, and also enhancing community gardens. Yanis Adrian Silva has more. Today, planners, Neighborhood Association members and the general public gather at the Convention Center in Colombia to learn about how to make their communities more livable, safer and beautiful. With over 20 vendors, our attendees had the opportunity to visit a mixture of booths from the Disability Action Center to South Carolina Health. 
I think, great components of this conference is that conference that we're trying to um, empower the communities in, in Richland County to look towards the future. We have about 170,000 acres of buildable land, which is about 270 acres um, within Richland County. But we also know we're going to grow by about 60,000 residents in the next 20 years. So one of the major tasks that the planning department has, that Richland County has, and that these neighborhoods has, is to reconcile how to best use that land to meet the growth expectations we have so that we're sustainable, we're attractive, we're economically competitive, um, and we're building a community that, that everybody wants to see in the future. The background of our keynote speaker, um, he's a, a planner, he's traveled all over the country, um, he's the president of the American Planning Association, so he gives lectures all over on the importance of planning and how important it is to community development. One of the biggest challenges that people face uh, is change. Um, people want change so long as nothing changes, and, and that's always very difficult. Um, we're growing. Communities have always changed. Uh, for example, this county, if you rewind 30, 40 years ago, it wasn't the same. And people were saying, don't change anything back then. Uh, so I think one of the challenges is that demographics is going to be a huge issue. It's going to affect our communities, uh, how we live, where we work. And so it's very important that people understand some of these emerging challenges and really be prepared for that growth, but manage it and be part of it so it's not something to be afraid of, it's something that you can embrace. And communities should come out and participate because that's how we decide how different communities grow. Sometimes you may have people complaining or, or concerned about development in their area. And if they're not part of the, the study, the group, the input to put their needs, their wants and their concerns, then other people may make the planning for them. You have developers get involved and they have their idea. But when the community get involved, representatives of the community but the planners who makes those decisions get a better idea of what the community needs and then we can go and move forward. But we have to talk about what issues affect them and educate them about some of the trends. With almost 200 attendees, this conference has certainly served its purpose by empowering planners, neighborhood association members, and the citizens to take their communities to another level. In Columbia, South Carolina, I'm Yanis Adrian Silva for Richland Reveal. Richland County has an active Neighborhood Council. If you'd like more information, you can contact the Neighborhood Improvement Program at 803-576-2166. Richland County is partnering with the nonprofit organization Chicora to identify abandoned and long forgotten cemeteries. The Chicora Foundation is a non-endowed, nonprofit foundation with a 23-year history of cemetery preservation, not only in Richland County, but throughout the southeastern United States. Jacor will help identify and mark the sites for posterity, but it's also plain good business sense. There's, there's not only this, this philosophical benefit, but there's, yes, a very pragmatic economic benefit. It's good business to know preservation, to know where these cemeteries are, to provide that information for development of Richland County. For more information, contact the Chikora Foundation at 803-737-6910 or go to their website at chikora.org. Richland County CASA is the county agency which advocates on behalf of thousands of our community's abused and neglected children. It's volunteer citizen-based and as RCTV's Justin Martin reports, the program volunteers are being recognized as the philanthropic agency of the year. Over a dozen men's sporting jerseys gather outside the Richland County Courthouse. This is just a handful of a special group of volunteers that assist some of the most vulnerable citizens in the county. They are known as CASA quarterbacks and they are throwing a touchdown for children. We are so excited today. The Richland County CASA quarterbacks, that's our male volunteers, they are going to be the award recipient for the best philanthropic group um, here because of all the things that they do. And we're just thrilled that they were here today, met with Judge Riddle and fellowship together as these guys. They have just done tremendous work over the last five years when they started off with only 13 men. Now we have over 100 male volunteers. I've been a quarterback for about four or five years. I've been a volunteer for six years. Um, being a quarterback has been uh, very fulfilling to me. When children enter the child protection system, they often move from foster home to foster home, but the CASA quarterback will be by their side throughout the entire process to offer advocacy in the courtroom and a sense of consistency for the kids. The need for male volunteers has never been greater. 
actually half of the children that we serve are boys and so we need more male volunteers who can serve as mentors. Some of the children that we serve, none of them have ever had a positive role model in their life. There's a lot of pride in being a quarterback. Um, we don't just let anyone into our fraternity um, and so you know if, if you're a hard-working person, if you're diligent, um, if you like kids, um, if you're trying to make the system better, um, if you believe that our kids are our most valuable asset, then um, we invite you out. For more information and to learn how you might become a volunteer court-appointed special advocate, call 803-576-1735. Located in the heart of downtown Columbia, the Columbia Museum of Art was established back in 1950 and has nearly 9,000 works spanning thousands of years of history and representing a full range of world cultures. And joining us here today with Ritual and Revealed is Karen Brosius, the Executive Director of the Columbia Museum of Art. Thank you so much for hosting us today. Thank you, Stephanie. It certainly is a beautiful facility in and of itself. I mean, the works are magnificent, but just the structure and the aesthetic quality of the facility itself is just so lovely. So we've really enjoyed being here. Well, great. We're glad to have you here. All right. Well, a lot of folks will be seeing this during the holiday, and we're now in the Mark Rothko exhibit. Tell us about him, because it is really significant, because there are many works that haven't been seen in a very long time, if, it ever, if ever. Well, Mark Rothko was one of the most important painters of the 20th century, American artist who died in 1970. And what's so important about him is that he used color in new and different ways. He's an abstract artist, but something about his paintings just are so luminous, and they float in space. And it's, many people have a very spiritual connection to these paintings. What's exciting about it is that the National Gallery of Art in Washington has the largest Rothko holdings in America. And they agreed to lend us 27 Rothkos and that's the most they've ever lent to any museum ever. So we're very proud at the Columbia Museum of Art of putting together a show that has significant art historical um, knowledge and impact, but also a show that's just clearly lovely and beautiful and translucent. Now, are a lot of these his early works? Well, Mark Rothko had a period in 1950 until he died in 1970 of creating paintings that we all probably know as classic Rothko, these big bands of color that you see in really interesting combinations and the way he stained the canvas make the paintings just float in the air. But the 1940s to the 1950s, he used to be Marco, Marcus Rothkowitz and he changed his name. He was an immigrant from Russia, moved to Portland, Oregon. And he changed his name because he was looking for a style and a, and a thought. And this decade, that we're calling the decisive decade, is where Rothko experiments and innovates and looks at paint and how he puts paint on canvas to come up with a very signature style. When you see a classic Rothko, it can be no one but. And so that's what's so exciting about this show. It's opening um, new windows to learning about Rothko that's never been done. Now, as I stated earlier, a lot of folks will be in for the holidays and families will be looking for things to do. Why is it a good idea to kind of pack up the family and come here to the museum? Well, we have family-friendly programs all year long. So when you come to the exhibition, there are things for children to do, families to do together, as well as for adults to do. For instance, we have a new free tour of the exhibition. It's called a tap tour. And we will loan you an iPod, and you tap the iPod, which is why it's the tap tour. And it features interviews with Mark Rothko's son, Christopher Rothko, about his father. And, which, you know what, and that brings in probably the teenagers who love the technology. The, the techno geeks will actually, <laughs> art is accessible to them. It's really <laughs> great fun. It's got video included, it's got pictures, it's got audio. And then the curator of the National Gallery is the other wonderful voice on it. It's free, um, so if you, with admission, or if you're a member, you always get free admission if you're a member. But you can get this tap tour and borrow it for free. It's about 30 minutes long, but you can use it for as long as you'd like. You can go from stop to stop. So we just launched it. So this is really an exciting program, and I hope people come to use it, because it adds a completely different dimension to the show. And I also want to thank Richland County Council because they have supported this museum 
for decades and we're so proud of their constant and ongoing and sustained support. It allows us to be nationally important um, and without their support, uh, it would just not be possible. Right, we were talking earlier about the fact that you've gotten exhibits that maybe only like maybe two or three museums in the country traveling um, exhibits right. over the last several years. They have been very exciting. Well, ma many people in Columbia had the chance to see our Hudson River School exhibition, and the Columbia Museum of Art was just featured in the New York Times Sunday uh, edition uh, this week about having the show and what a splendid exhibition installation it was. So I think the support that we get from the county is so important to us and lets us really raise the bar for our city and our county. And I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about is how the Museum of Art really seems to be accessible and reaching out to our community because, you know, I think art is for everyone and it seems that that's part of your mission as well. So just speak to what you believe the museum's role is in the community. Well, creativity is central to everyday life and I believe art is central to creativity and creativity is essential in the 21st century for success. You have to learn how to creatively think about problems, solve problems, and art is one way that you can really develop your skills. And as a result, we're open six days a week now, and Sundays we're free thanks to Blue Cross Blue Shield. So you can come from 12 to 5 on Sunday at no cost. And then during the week, if you're a member, you always get in free, and then we have um, rates any less than ten dollars to get in so it's very affordable for a family or friends to come to the museum so we really believe in art is for everyone it really is and it's just such a calming place so you folks need to come on out get off the couch and you're looking for something to do and it really will inspire the little ones so thank you so much again for having us thank it you, has Stephanie. been great we leave you now with some of the sights and sounds of the museum that's going to do it for this edition of richland revealed make it a great week <laughs>